So it's looking like a wrap on the riding season. Check it out now. Well, this is a sad video to have to bring you folks, but it's that time. I've used up all my powers of procrastination, and this point became inevitable. So to express my true feelings, I can't even do it myself without help. So Florida, take it away. Damn, damn, damn. All right, so now that that outburst is out of the way, I wanted to cover the seven steps I take to winterize my bike. Now, before taking these steps, you might want to warm up your bike. If you're fortunate enough to go for a ride, please do. So the first step is to take care of the fuel. For that, I'll be using Stable Stabilizer. And th what this is going to do is treat your gas up to the next two years, but at least until the next season. It'll also help with the ethanol that's in the gasoline now. So the proper ratio is one ounce for every two and a half gallons of gasoline. And we'll pour our stabilizer in. Now you want to fill up your gas tank at the highest level with fuel. This will help with no water getting in the gas tank and no air. As we all know, condensation causes rusting. The reason I put it in the gas can is because if I am able to sneak out for a ride during the winter, the combination of the stable and the gasoline is already mixed, so I can just fill the tank right back up. So the next step in the procedure would be to do a complete oil change. But if you need to see how to do the procedure, here's a link to my video where I filmed a motor oil and gear oil change. Now the third step in my procedure would be to wash the bike. I've washed her recently, so I don't feel the need to wash her again. But I am going to treat the vinyl with a product called 303 Aerospace Protectant. I like the way that gives the bike an overall shine. Fourth thing I'll do to winterize the bike is hook up my battery tender. Now within the community, there's a lot of discussion. Should you take the battery inside the house? or leave it outside. I've been under the notion that because car batteries survive the winter on the outside, and I know these batteries aren't as powerful as car batteries, but leaving them outside wouldn't be too bad. That way, no acid will leak from the battery inside your house. But if you feel like taking them inside, I understand that also, because you can keep an eye a little bit better on the battery tender. But you definitely want to have a battery tender charging that battery either periodically throughout the winter or leave it on there for the duration of the winter. Now for the fifth tip, I like to have my tires fully charged with air. And this is my Slime Digital Tire Pressurizer that I gave more detail in my video for product reviews. Tip number six is that I put my tires on cardboard or carpet on the garage floor throughout the winter. This helps with keeping control of the cold seeping up through the concrete into your rubber. And it also keeps the tires from getting flat spots. Tip number seven, last but not least, I put a cover over the bike because after washing the bike, I don't want any scratches or any dust particles to scratch the finish on the bike. And with that, that covers my seven steps for winterizing your scooter. Hope you guys enjoyed this, found it useful, and as hard as it is for me to say, I'll see you guys next season. I want to thank everybody for subscribing to me this year and watching all my videos. I really appreciate the support. And I'd like to give a shout out to my boy 90 GT Vert, who recently got into an accident hitting a deer while going 50 miles per hour. So again, shout out to my boy. Get well soon. And I'll see you guys next season. Have a good one, guys. Talk to you later.